Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Madhavi Gupta. Today we'll be talking about breast cancer with brain metastasis. Having metastasis in the brain can be a matter of huge concern, both for the patients as well as the medical team. After lung cancer, breast cancer is the most common cancer associated with brain mets. To discuss this topic, today I'm joined by Dr. Nancy Lin. Dr. Lin is an Associate Chief for the Division of Breast Oncology at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. She's also a Director for the Program for Patients with Breast Cancer Brain Metastasis. She has an extensive research experience on this topic and has authored a number of publications, including the recent study of tacatinib in patients with HER2-positive breast cancer. In addition, she is also an author of the up-to-date section on brain metastases in breast cancer. So once patients develop brain mets, what are some of the signs and symptoms they present with? Yeah, the most common sign or symptom is actually headaches. Uh, And classically, at least the teaching goes that the headaches tend to be morning headaches. Uh, They can, uh, the red flags are if they're morning headaches, especially associated with nausea or vomiting, that would be really a red flag to get CNS imaging and, and a patient who has, certainly a patient who has advanced breast cancer. Um, Other symptoms that can occur are seizures, although that actually probably only is a presenting symptom, maybe about 10% of the time. It's not actually the most common presenting symptom. Sometimes people do present with vocal weakness. Again, not an incredibly uh, common presenting symptom. Um, Other symptoms that people often uh, report like chemo brain or Uh, memory issues, those are actually very, very uncommonly a presentation of brain metastases. So I tend to reassure patients that their symptom is probably not from brain metastasis and look for other causes and try to treat their symptoms uh, in other other ways. Are there any screening guidelines for doing brain MRIs in patients who are at higher risk for developing brain metastasis? Yeah, this is a really good question. You know, breast cancer is quite different Uh, from lung cancer in terms of the way it's managed. And in lung cancer and melanoma for that matter, you know, the guidelines typically recommend routine uh, baseline imaging of the brain, whereas breast cancer guidelines actually recommend against routine uh, screening in patients who are asymptomatic. And the rationale for that has been, you know, lack of demonstrated benefit, clinical benefit to patients for early detection of brain metastases and some potential for harm because of the potential to exclude from clinical trials And also if the scans are timed sort of randomly relative to switch start of therapy, it may be the patient's actually responding to therapy, but you didn't know it because you didn't do a scan prior to the start of of the new therapy. And then you incorrectly conclude that the patient's on an um, ineffective regimen. So generally the guidelines have discouraged routine screening. Having said that, I think it's really an important question. And it's not that the um, screening is discouraged because there's data to show that's harmful, it's just that there's no data. So there are um, several efforts uh, in the United States, in Canada, and in South Korea to do prospective screening trials with screening MRI in patients with uh, breast cancer, focused mostly on metastatic breast cancer, but the Boston study also includes a cohort of patients with inflammatory breast cancer being treated with curative intent uh, because those patients are also at high risk of developing CNS uh, relapse. Uh, So hopefully we'll have some more information. Um, In the meantime, I do counsel people, especially who have HER2 positive or triple negative metastatic breast cancer about the symptoms that I want them to tell me about and have a low threshold to order CNS imaging if they have those symptoms. So let us say once the patient is diagnosed with brain metastases, 
what are some of the factors that determine whether the patient is a candidate for local treatment options? And could you also tell us about the different local treatment options that are available to these patients? Right, so the main three local treatment options are surgery, surgical resection, hormone radiation therapy, or focal radiation of one form or, an or another, <clears throat> uh, whether it's SRS or some fractionated uh, radiation. Um, and, you know, the way that we think about this is really uh, based on a patient's symptoms, the size and the location of the lesion or lesions, um, and the status of their extracranial disease, as well as the performance status. So to give sort of a couple of extremes, you know, a patient who has a solitary lesion, uh, has no other history of distant metastatic disease, um, in general, if that patient has surgical accessible disease, I will send them to the OR uh, for both diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Uh, there was this very old randomized trial of surgery, uh, yes or no, everybody received whole brain radiation led by uh, Dr. Patchell that showed that for patients presenting with a solitary CNS lesion assumed to be a brain met about 10% had an alternate diagnosis at the time of surgery. So I think uh, for the patient presenting with a solitary CNS lesion who has a prior cancer history, I do think that tissue diagnosis is important if it's feasible. Um, otherwise, on the other extreme is the patient who presents with you know, 20 uh, scattered brain metastases in multiple different uh, locations, supra and infratentorial, and that patient would generally be best served with whole brain radiation therapy as the initial local therapy. And of course, there's the in-between cases of patients presenting with, you know, several lesions, uh, which can be adequately treated with SRS-based approaches. Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lilly and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, donate and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.